I'm Kerry Stinson, and my journey through life has been quite an adventure. For over 20 years, I played Barney the Dinosaur on tour and seven seasons of the hugely popular TV show, Barney and Friends. Now my journey is to bring together friends and guests from all over the entertainment world for inspiring and at times amusing behind the scenes conversation. I'm Kerry Stinson, and this is Purple Roads. Welcome to Purple Roads. My name is Kerry Stinson. And as you can see, we got a very special holiday episode. I was trying to think what would be fun to do this year. Um, we, we did one with Santa last year from Radio City Music Hall, and that was so much fun. And I thought, you know, I know what we need to do. So we're going to talk all about the Christmas episodes and uh, Macy's Day Parade with my good friend, my bro, my pal, my boy boy, Kyle Nelson. Kyle played BJ for... I can't even count how many years on tour and on Barney and Friends with me. And Kyle, how are you, my friend? I'm doing great, Carrie. This is awesome. Thank Man, you for having me. This is going to be great. Me. If you don't mind, I, this hat's going to drive me crazy here, so I'm going to take that off. <laughs> <laughs> but I had I like to start it, with it, right? I had of to course. start with it. Man, how are you? You're looking good. Thank you. Yeah, doing great. Um, just uh, finished my first, well, not my first, but finished the semester of school uh first semester and just enjoying this christmas break till we start back up in january and just uh enjoying this holiday time uh, with family and just getting ready to visit extended family over this christmas break well i appreciate you taking your time out to do this i just the fans always have questions i thought you know we've never done a show like this you and I did a lot of stuff together over the holidays from Christmas on the road to Macy's Day Parade to episodes of Barney and Friends. So we've done so much. So that's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to talk about all of that. So I thought this would be fun here because um, I know you got some stuff to show. I've got some stuff to tell too. So I'm going to show you some pictures you probably haven't seen. <laughs> or if not, it's been a, it's been a moment. Because yeah. I'm going through my stuff. We go through these things. And I found this picture. Oh. Okay. So that looks familiar, right? Bush Gardens. I think it was Bush Gardens. Very good. And then this one. Yes. <laughs> Antoine and Casey. That's right. And that was in, do you remember where that was? That, oh, man. I do remember where that one was. Was that, was that in? Bush Gardens as well, or was no? That? that was in Utah. Utah, okay. That was in oh, Utah. up in Park City. Yep, up in Park okay. City. That's exactly right. Looking, looking fly as we always do. Yes. Um, and then you know, this is really how I know Kyle, and so I thought this is such an appropriate picture to show. Oh yes. You know, we really, really got to know each other on the road, and and just so special. Um, and that's where it started. So that's where I want to start with this. What do you remember? What was it like uh, Christmas on the road? You know, we did parties and we were, you know, we'd go home for Christmas, but we'd come back and New Year's out on tour. So what are your memories of that? It, I would, I'm just reflecting back on it. Those are really fond memories and, and experiences. All right. So, you know, Christmas on the road was so much fun, Kyle. And you remember we used to do like Secret Santas and stuff like that. Do you remember? Who yours yes. was? Yes, my secret Santa, my first secret Santa was Barry Pearl. <laughs> and he was quite the gift giver. Uh, he, I, he definitely did a great job of uh, making sure I didn't know who my secret Santa was up until the final gift, which he gave me a skateboard, which I greatly appreciated because I was an avid skateboarder at the time. You know, it's funny you say that. I'm pretty sure the first time I ever saw you, you walked onto the, the bus at the airport and you had a skateboard in your arms. I'm pretty sure yeah. when we first met and you came out, there was a skateboard with you in your backpack. Yeah, yeah, I definitely I was an avid skater at the time, but quickly realized that I, I had to uh, refrain from my extreme I, skateboard tricks just out of the uh, awareness that I, I needed to be on stage. <laughs> Which, you know, it's interesting because that had to have been tough for you. I, I can remember us going uh, skiing 
and you were snowboarding. Yeah. And as I recall, snowboarding was kind of new with that. Like it wasn't what it's become now, right? In, in yeah. X Games and all that stuff. And I remember you on a rail and I was like, there's no dang way. There's no way. And I know it had to be hard for you because you were a daredevil. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, and that was my youth. I mean, I started Barney when I was 19 and I, 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 I had to grow up fast in terms of understanding the premise of being a professional. I'm working on the stage show and that um, I, the consequence of injuring myself was pretty great. So I, I definitely had to turn it down a, a notch or two, but still enjoyed I, those outdoor activities. You know, I found some pictures. I got more pictures. And some of these are actually before you. Um, Because what year did you start? I started the fall of 97. The fall of 97. Okay, so I had started, we had started the fall of 96. So a year year before you. So I had pictures. This is the first Christmas party we had on the road. So the tree. Nice. some of these faces, you're you're gonna your your jaw's gonna drop when you see this one. Nice, you got you, Lee, Ronald, yeah. Mike Hagan, then Pat with little Colin man, and now he's all grown up, married. Dwayne, Creech, <laughs> and uh, you know this is crazy because they're they're all big old adults now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's Vanessa Lauren yeah. and Courtney Cook. And, you know, we talk about this a lot on, on Purple Roads and, and even we did this on Purple Tales. We were, you know, we we're a family and we also believed in giving back a lot. And you probably haven't seen this either, but this is a picture that all of us did. This was a year before you, you know, some of these people. Uh-huh. Um, we went to a hospital and, and sang uh did christmas carols as ourselves to the kids um which if anyone has ever heard me sing that that's not actually a a holiday treat but that's the kind of stuff that people did and it was just so cool i thought it was so special and you know being on the road we became family and we really felt like family i mean i'm talking to you now like i talk to you every day like you know and uh I think that's why it wasn't as hard, right? You know, you 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 come home for break, but then you go back on the road, but you're going, obviously you're doing something you love, but you're also going to see people that you really got to know. What was that like for you? When you get out there, you know, no one. And of course, some of us had been out there before you got out there. And then mm-hmm. how quickly everyone, you know, just embraces you and you're part of the family and all that stuff. I would say just just thinking on the top of my head, um Penny Wilson I mean, she kind of took me under her wing as well as I mean, everyone else and I have a letter which I still I, mean, I still have that she wrote to my mom and my dad just talking about how much she has enjoyed getting to know me and just expressing I mean, that she she's going to take care of me and on this tour so I am I, and I, I know you can attest to this. And she was she was kind of our 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 adopted mom on tour that I really helped um, emphasize the importance of that family unit and how that all kind of is encompassed by what Barney represents. And I just like like you say, I, I just remember I, our holiday parties um, just being very festive, but I intimate in the sense that I it was time for us it was a time for us to be able to spend together enjoy our time with one another and just I get to know one another and I think that that was one of the unique things about the stage show was that I even though we had a job and we I spend time during catering before in between shows I we we really made an emphasis to get to know one another outside of work um, and being able to go experience those things in, in all the different cities we were in. I 
and I I thoroughly enjoyed and I'm just grateful for my um, opportunities that I had to kind of participate in those um, Make a Wish events and and just and any any opportunity to really kind of shed the light of what Barney represented and the love of Barney. Well, you know, I think those Secret Santas were so important and special and fun. Oh yeah. Because you are doing the same show every day, right? And it's a lot of work. There's a physical aspect to it. We're having fun, but we're also really working. And that part, I remember being a lot of fun, right? Something shows up in your crate or something shows up in your, uh, you know, wherever, on the bus, in your bunk, and, you know, those kind of things. And uh, I, I can remember one of mine, too. And uh, I got all kinds of Viking stuff, which was just awesome. I knew I had a good Secret Santa there. And uh, and that stuff was fun. I think that was so important. That was fun because it is difficult to be away during the holidays. Yeah. So no, I, I agree. I'm being able to do that. Do that stuff. I definitely made made that holiday season um, memorable. And just uh, you, you you just kind of created more of a bond with the people you were with. Well, you and I have, we have so much in common, so many things we've done together. And here's another one. I know this looks very familiar to you. Yeah, I got mine here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. He's, he's, he's trumping me. He's, he's making me look bad. He's making me look bad. I have a few others, but, but I remember this one. We did this one together. And as, as I recall, this was the park. Right. This was the float that was the was the park, right? Yep. Yeah, and then the facade of the caboose. Yes. Yes. And it's a it's a great one to talk about because I can remember a lot of crazy things. Um, I think for both of us, we'd already done one before that, right? So we were yeah, both yeah. veterans of Make Sure Day Parade. I'm gonna tell you what I remember, and then I'm gonna ask you what you remember. One, I remember getting up early and being in the costume a long time. I, I remember it being wet is, was that the one that was, it had rained? No, I, that, that year was when you were with Jill. Okay. So Charlie. we'll talk, we'll talk about that one in a second. Yeah. Okay. Then what I remember about this one was that that float was rocking, right? Yeah, Cause we, weren't we doing a move where the whole thing was, yeah, I think oh, yeah. Jeff almost went up in the air. Yeah. And yeah, we did, um, I want to say it was the colors song we like colors we like them a lot we got colors colors yeah we all had to kind of congregate to the center and yeah like you said i the <laughs> the and the float i'm and it's on it's on a a tray it's a trailer in essence i'm kind of and it's got its own shocks so i'm it's all it's like a trampoline so yeah that, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, I remember it rocking. I remember it rocking. What is going in your head? Because, and I don't know that people totally realize this, but you're out on the float for like three hours. You've been in the costume for like four hours. And then there's a sign saying that you're about to be on national TV and, and get ready, right? Get okay. ready. And for us, we just keep waving until we hear the music and then we go right into choreography. Man, that... Uh, that's something right all of a sudden millions of people are watching you yeah kind of what is you in your your head when you're going up oh, here we go. let's lace yeah, it up I, I, i'll admit i'm the nerves are going i'm i was just ex primarily excited just because i'm i'm in my mind i i i felt confident in our our routine and um i i, I was more concerned as to making sure that I was hitting points because like you've we've just discussed in the past I right, how your peripheral is limited that you have to have good vantage points of what you're going to hold on to when you're transitioning to another spot and I, I found that like as long as I got my hand on the handrail and from from where I was starting to where I was going I'm going down a couple steps if I made it down under the that flat surface there on the main the main part that I mean, everything would be okay and i like you say and you're on the float for like two three hours 
and then we we get into I, I, being on camera and what we rehearsed I felt like a I'm a reasonable I period of time I and these were like I three minute compilations of like two or three songs and but when you are actually doing it live it like it's like boom like you did it and you're done like whoa that was we're done <laughs> and we then proceed off and and like that whole three hours I'm primarily I was encompassed or focused on what transpired in two minutes but um yeah but it's I knew still so true it's so true and then I I always remember going all right Miss Penny's going to call us here in a minute and we'll either find out if we still have a ticket to go back to Dallas or if I need to find an apartment in New York. Yes, she, I, and she was very keen on I, telling us that there are certain steps we may have missed or, or I, if, we, if we weren't, our timing was off. But I, I thought for most part every year and we were always on, on point just because like you said, I, you're on national TV and got to make it count. And I'm, yeah, no, I, I'm, that was stuff that I, and I, I just thrived, lived for to be able to do. I and mean, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And that one was, was probably my favorite because we've been doing that for so long. The three of us were working on, uh, on Barney and friends at that time together. We knew each other so well. And uh, you know, if, if, if something happened, we knew how to improvise at that point, right? So you feel really, we'd all done it before. Um, so yeah, that rocking, that rocking though, I remember that. I remember, cause you know, what people don't know is that we're all, you know, Jeff, I remember him laughing. You know, he's got that that laugh that you just yeah. can't forget. And he's laughing and we're just rocking. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about that other one that you're talking about. The one that it rained, um, and, and yeah, and so Jill was baby bop on that one, right? Yeah, yeah, my wife Jill played baby bop, and my counterpart, uh, DJ uh, Charlie Crook, he, he um, played, uh, he was DJ on the Macy's Day Parade, and uh, I remember I, trying to search for pictures, I, I know Jill has them, but I remember you like one of the pictures, you all were in a car and just completely drenched. And I think that was from the, I don't know if it was from the rehearsal or if it was from the actual. Um, the was it, uh, is it us in costumes or is it us out of costume? It was out of, you were out of costume. That probably but, was rehearsal that, well, or it could have been that morning. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I remember her mentioning how I mean, the costume really, absorbed a lot of that rain and that just the arms were relatively heavy just because the, the the water all kind of circulates down to the hands but um but yeah i think and that was i was just saying it was it was crazy i yeah. i can't even tell you how much barney weighed it i oh, mean yeah. it it you know was a huge sponge and you're you're waving at people and you're throwing water on yeah. them like you're just throwing water, <laughs> slinging it everywhere. And there's, there's nowhere to go. Like there's no, there's no, I think, you know, and I know you'll agree with this a thousand percent that our Wranglers are the greatest in the world yeah. at what they do. And they're just feeling horrible. You know, they're trying to hold umbrellas and it's raining so hard. The umbrella can't do it. And uh, you know, they try to take you in. There's nothing you can, there's nothing you can do. And I remember just thinking when the, when the dance number came up, don't slide off this float. Yep. Like the deck is so slick. Don't make a move and just slip. I mean, I go right in the street <laughs> or think, they could have. Well, I think, was that the year that you guys were on the float that had that kind of bridge? And it had a slick deck. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, I remember the deck was yeah. so slick. And I was just kept thinking, don't do anything for your foot to slide because if it yeah. slides, you're done. Like it's yeah. over. You're in the street, <laughs> right on national TV. Shrink. <laughs> yeah, I think that was ni ninety nine. All right, 
Yeah, November 99. But um, uh, I, 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 it's experiences like those that really kind of um, demonstrate I, perseverance through understanding like, like you, uh, you're Barney. I, regardless of weather conditions, you're still gonna demonstrate and, and embrace the weather. I mean, no different than what Barney would do. And, and, uh, and I think that I, I, even in, in, in situations like that, it kind of makes those experiences a little bit more memorable because I, I, you were able to withstand heavy rains and, and in and other years, like heavy winds, uh, just, I, just to really I see the smiles on those kids' faces as and you're passing by and I am that's I not to me I that was I one of the things that just really made it so well worth it was because I I even though I you're not on the stage show stage I you're on a stage that's moving and you've got I hundreds of thousands of people I I mean, all kind of a line down Broadway and I mean, all the different streets that I mean, ventured through at, until we got up to I mean, Macy's, the, the store. So yeah, I, I, that was a lot of fun. What's, uh, what's the atmosphere like Christmas in New York? The oh, Thanksgiving in New York, Christmas in New York. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely one of those bucket list type experiences that I would I encourage anyone and everyone to go do just because I New York and you've got obviously a big city, um, just very culturally diverse and I'm, I'm awesome restaurants. And that was like, to me, like just I'm, things that make me think of my first experiences is just like, the smell. I mean, granted, like you got subway smells, right. but like, and you're up on in the streets, and you smell the hot dog stand, and you smell the pretzel stands, and and you hear and you hear the the cars, the taxis, um, just I mean, you got Times Square the lights, I and mean, it's just I mean, and for me, like at the time being a 19 year old, I'm from Fargo, North Dakota, I'm. And it's an experience unlike any other because I, like, I've never been. I, at that time, that was kind of like my first really big city experience to to be around that I, that kind of population of people, and uh, and then also I, and to be able to enjoy I, going to a Broadway play or a musical and enjoy just the food, going to um, and stage deli, and I'm trying to think of um, Star Diner, and uh, I'm trying to. There's so many different Star restaurants. Star Diner was yes, that was wasn't it? Was it Star or was it Starlight? I think I think it was the Star Diner. Okay, I know was which one right, you're talking about. It was awesome. Yeah, right next to the theater that um, that. Uh, what was that music? I know what you're talking about. Oh man, <laughs> it'll come to me. See, but, even the 19 year old, you know, gets yeah. a little older. His memory's a little <laughs> off too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. I mean, we're gonna keep this going because now we got Barney and friends, and we did so much in the in the holidays with Barney and friends. I want to talk about. It's really where I wanted to go with all this. What was your first video? Uh, Barney's Christmas Star. Yeah. I'm, I'm right on it, sir. I'm right on it. Yeah. Right on it. Yeah. Th yeah this is really cool. special because it was mine too. Um, this was the first thing that I fully did uh, video wise for them. And I know you too. And, and this was such a special experience. And I want to talk about all of this and then the, the other ones as well. Um, I've mentioned it on this show before, but one of the craziest things about this is that we we filmed this during 9-11. Yep. And when we when the country had a, a moment uh, of silence, we were on that set. And I think it was Eric Norberg 
um, we took a moment of silence for the country and I'm in the costume standing in fake snow. And it's just, it's an experience that I'll, I'll never forget with these amazing people that I love very much and what had happened in the country and that whole, it was such a surreal moment. And I know for you and I, this was our first really big thing, you know, leaving the road and all the years we put in and we've gone here. And I remember, you know, we, we do that, but then it's, you got to get back to work. Um, what was it like for you? And then I'll talk about it as well. Well, so that's September, right? We started that, I think, at the end of August rehearsals, and then we're filming in September, right? So you're in yeah. September having Christmas, running into snow and, and all of that good stuff. What's that experience like for you? It was fun. I mean, I, I, I really enjoyed, I, I remember we filmed there in Las Colinas and uh, I understood it was a, a pretty big elaborate set. And like you say, I had a lot of fake snow and I just remember um, Shauna and the other Wranglers, I don't know if they had like those, um, those sticky rollers. Yeah. They would always have to like, I mean, sticky roll off the the fake snow off their hands and off our bodies because i know it's it stick to us um <clears throat> right when you're doing a you've you're doing the next scene and you're not supposed to have any snow on you and bj's yeah. got a lot of snow on you right yeah yeah i i i i, I just remember um how i just how, how elaborate it was there's just so much involved and a lot of people um, involved and a lot of uh, cast members and such, which, which really made it fun because I'm kind of going back to like the stage show. I'm you, you, you were amongst a lot of people, like whether it was crew members or other cast members and just, uh, and it, it, it kind of felt at home being amongst a lot of other people getting to know one another and, and during our, our, our lunch break or, or, or in between um, uh, filming. But I, for me, I, I'm reflecting on the fact that that was during 9-11, that I remember that day, I, I wasn't there in the morning. I came kind of mid afternoon, my call time, I wanna say it was around noon, but I do recall um, waking up and a friend had called me um, because I remember he had mentioned that I, he was thinking I was in like w Washington Dulles, but it was like Dallas area. But um, so he, he was kind of concerned, like if I was safe and all right. And I told him, yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. And I, through, through that conversation, I was turning on the TV. And of course, I am just seeing what everyone else was seeing was just kind of in that state of surreal like wow this is this i this is a new and i don't want to say a new normal but this is a new thing that we were having to adapt to understanding and um i know that it was definitely a uh, a, a sensitive topic or sensitive thing to to talk about to children especially when you're filming on set and i thought it was very um, very smart and um, and respectful of the I mean, the the crew, the producers, and them to I mean, not really divulge what was going on to kind of really alter a child's thought, especially since we had kids on set. Right. But, I mean, we we had I and mean, we we had a timeline to fulfill what we needed to do. So I and mean, I mean, we all we all really stuck together. And uh, and out of respect, like you said, I mean, Eric Norberg, I mean, I mean, demonstrating a moment of silence was definitely was definitely um, an honorable thing to do. It was, and I was there that morning. And when I walked off, because I always I only was working the morning that day, and I walked off when it was happening. And just like you said, they they pulled me aside and said, "Do not tell the kids anything. We want their parents to do it." So we're going to have their, their parents are coming in and uh, we're going to let their parents do this. And, you know, that was one of the greatest things about Barney. They, 
they were so good with everyone. I mean, it really was a family and they were really smart and they were really good at making sure how they handled situations like that. When it comes to that snow, I remember it being hard to run it. <laughs> I remember my legs as we were running and skipping and jumping in that stuff. And uh, I remember it being almost like sand. And you're just like, oh, my goodness yeah. gracious, my legs are burning. Yeah, and especially like, if, yeah, like, like you say, if you have no good I mean, footing or if, if like, if you feel like your feet are sliding and it, it, it definitely like, makes for an interesting scenario. And so you're just kind of taking on the idea of like, well, I certainly don't want to fall. And I'm, there's a good likelihood with our big sh shoes on that if, I'm, if our shoes don't have that grasp, I'm, we could fall. But no, I remember that. I'm, <laughs> you know, I know another question that people are going to want to ask, and you and I can both answer this. This was also, the, this was like changing of the guard, right? I was coming in and taking over for David Joyner, who had been doing the, the video production for a long time. And Jeff Brooks had been doing the character of BJ for so long, and you had come in. And so the two tour guys, we'd both been around for a long time with Barney, but you know, the, the crew was getting to know us. Some mm -hmm. of the cast was getting to, to know us. Um, you know, I had been used to trying to live up to, not live up, but to learn what David was doing. You know, David was doing these big moves and things of that nature. What was it like for you to come in and, and know that you're taking over this role that has been so successful and someone's done it? I know you've done it on the road, but now here you are doing it on the TV show. Did you have any thought about that? Yeah, no, I totally agree. I, and I definitely wanted to emulate the character um, with many of the same um, mannerisms as what Jeff Brooks would do. And he would, I, I know that when BJ was kind of stationary and he would always kind of keep his arms moving. So that was kind of a, a trademark BJ type um, um, ism. And, and so that was definitely something I, I always wanted to honor and, and pay respect to. I, I definitely, I, to be able to say even now that I was able to play the role of BJ on a TV production I, is, is still mind boggling and, and just, just some an experience that I will always cherish but like you say it, it amidst the, the kind of that changing of the guard and transitioning of I mean pe people in, in those roles I and mean, we always we always pay homage and respect to those that were there before us and and I've, I've been fortunate to have I mean, befriended Jeff Brooks and and to have worked with David Joyner and just consummate professionals and I, I know it's a, I, a lot of fun to to spend that time and and to to carry on that that torch that Barney torch um, absolutely absolutely so then we get to Barney and friends and you know it's funny how you say Christmas star was elaborate because it was but then I can remember us doing Christmas episodes uh, on Barney and friends that were very elaborate um, so I want to talk about, if you remember when they snowed the park, yeah. you remember that with the caboose of the park? And I, I mean, my goodness gracious, it was absolutely spectacular. You know, Bob LaValle and Elizabeth Belton and all of the art department, the boys and the girls that did such an amazing job. I mean, it was so pretty. I remember just like not, not even wanting to step on anything because <laughs> you know they'd have to go and rake that stuff up after you do things like that so what was your thought about seeing the park just absolutely gorgeous i uh, it, i'm kind of like what you're saying it definitely gives I mean, it, it perspective to all the the fine detailed things that take place because when you're when you're having to match shots and like like you say i'm 
trying to avoid touching certain things because I need, don't want to mess anything up. I, in certain circumstances, you had to. It was kind of a part, it was a part of the, the act. And if snow was moved, I, and we redid it, I, whether it was like t- Tim Thomason or Tim McGarity, I, and they'd, they'd be back out there I, looking at the shot pre- prior and be like, oh yeah, I know there's snow here on this part. And I, th- those are the little things that many people don't really realize I require such I, a large uh, production crew. And, but I, in it, I, I, it's, it's kind of, it's a lot of hard work, but the end result, just the final, the project and, and looking at it and like, wow, I, I was a part of that. And, and those songs that we sang, I really transcended that experience that I, that I, and I'm sure many children who watch those videos with their families just thoroughly enjoy. And I, I, it's, I, being able to kind of look at it in retrospect, I'm, I definitely was another one of those things that I was very thankful to be a part of. Yeah, I also remember the same scenario. I remember us coming out of the caboose and the same thing, that snow is so slick. <laughs> and I think there's a couple of times, one of us, if not me, went down, yeah. the, down, the, <laughs> down the stairs. I'm sure both of us did because those stairs, especially there with the caboose in the park, I. That, that was a that was a common location for falls to take place well no quite i mean we, we were like you just go right you don't really i mean you think about it but you you can't look cautious when you're going down the stairs right barney wouldn't be doing that or bj or baby bob wouldn't be doing that so you kind of just have to go down like like you would mm-hmm. like you're comfortable there and you know you know that you can do a second take if you you bump 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 now uh, you're going to give me grief and Jeff's going to give me grief and and Jeff goodness gracious he loved giving us grief for stuff like that and he'd be laughing so I can still hear his laugh yes I know he <laughs> and I remember like between takes and we would be behind the the facade of the caboose and I and they would call us on and in our countdown and I remember him just and he he was obviously the one that would I kind of like break the ice and and help us kind of become more relaxed and in, in, in the moment uh, he would hold on to my tail I and I'm like let go go <laughs> or or I he I he would make a funny joke like right before we'd leave so I I'd have to kind of keep my composure in costume I while while we're I'm going through the act but I those are still <laughs> good fun memories well they are and they were so important as you say you know you you're working with kids you're working with fake snow you're working with all this stuff you know there are times we're doing eight nine ten takes and you run out there go down the stairs someone slips and we got to reset everything right they got to fix the snow you know make sure we're okay all that stuff and you go out again and then you know something happens and now we got to do it again and so those little jokes and all that stuff he would do, I, you know, he knew because he'd been around for so yeah. long, but I, I think it was just, you know, it, I don't know. It was the best part about it. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that that we needed that amidst I mean, the number of takes that we would do. And I think that too, it also I mean, helped us I mean, adapt I mean, more patience and understanding um, s- situations will come about and that I mean, I mean, we have the opportunity to do that take over again. And uh, and then like when seeing it in the final result, I mean, makes it all well worth it just because I mean, you wanna provide the best product I mean, for, for the kids that are watching. I remember reading the Christmas script when I saw that you, Jeff, and Adam were going to be elves. And I thought, oh my goodness gracious, what in the world is going to happen here? <laughs> How did that go about? Did they approach you about it before they wrote the scripts? How did that all come together? Uh, yeah, they, uh, I remember 
I mean, obviously for me, I mean, it was one of those quick, like, of course, yeah, I and mean, I'd love to do that. And I mean, being able to then, I mean, out of costume, uh, portray a character that is actually myself um, I mean, as an elf, but I'm utilizing my voice. I remember uh, doing uh, audio recordings with Joe Phillips and I am doing the song that we did and <clears throat> him like help. I, I don't know if it, like using some auto tune track or some auto tune software being able to. You need to be auto tuned? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Didn't want a low tone elf. <laughs> they wanted this high pitch, squeaky voice type elf. And, but that was, I'm just being able to experience that I being in an audio booth I was was quite fun just because I and you see the our voice talent I that's what I that's their role that's what they do being able to kind of take on that role was was definitely a new experience for me and I I, I remember being on stage and going through rehearsal and I remember I and Fred Holmes, I'm talking about I'm line of sight and how I, even though when we're in costume, I mean, it's just kind of a natural tendency for us to I, kind of I, align our, our costume so that we're in, in focus with the camera. But when you're out of costume, you're, you really have to identify that I, you, your eyes need to be focused on something that develops this notion that it's a natural setting and that I, that you're not looking at camera. And so I just remember quickly realizing like, all right, don't look at camera, don't look at camera. Um, so yeah, that was definitely a fun experience with both Jeff and Adam and I, and another one of those things that definitely um, I have to pay respect and um, homage to Lisa Albertson and, and the costume crew for putting together such amazing costumes. Um, and, that, and that was a lot of fun just because I, I had something that was custom fitted to me and I, I definitely, definitely felt I, like I was in Santa's workshop. I, I, was, I was an elf I, I, I was ready to do this thing. Um, and and but, that was with with the great Lindy Davis too, right? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. She she was a joy to work with. I just her her energy, um, just her sense of humor. So, and I already kind of know the answer to this because I I know you guys so well. But does it bother you being asked to play an elf? Does that bother you? Does any concern from any of you about that? For me personally, no. I mean, I think that um, this day and age. Things have definitely changed for I mean, a lot of what they call kind of typecast roles. Uh, but I think that portraying an elf, no different than portraying any other kind of character, whether it be a leprechaun, um, like some fictitious kind of, uh, kind of medieval type character. Sure. I, it's It's all a part of, I mean, imagination, and and I think that in large part the bigger thing that I mean, I would be more um, concerned about is is my character being portrayed um, in a derogatory way, or is my character being portrayed in a manner that is focused on my stature and not the character itself? So, I mean, I think that I mean, just out of respect, I definitely. Um, identify with the little people community that would rather defer not to be looked upon as people that I typically are like just generally only play elves or only play leprechauns. I mean, we, we've definitely kind of break broke that threshold of, of being able to be I mean, looked upon as real actors, people that can can play the roles of any any other character outside of a fictitious character. 
but I think the important thing is that that um, that whatever character that is that is being portrayed or being played and is not deemed to be I, looked upon as offensive or to be made fun of and and I think that the the great thing is that I see a, a positive shift in society and especially in the entertainment field kind of going away from what used to be a norm and so I and and seeing how other people I like in just uh magazine ads and commercials I mean, you, you you see people of different cultures I mean, different ethnicities, I mean, stature, size, I and mean, I mean, being looked at I mean, in, in a in a more normal sense that I and mean, it's I and mean, that's that's normal, that's reality, and I think that's important, especially for our youth, to understand that I mean, that especially I mean, people with um, physical challenges, I and mean, people with I mean, who are, who are amputees, I mean, being portrayed in uh, in different lights that can be an influence and inspiration to others that I may have a, a similar condition. Now, I, that's so well spoken. I, I love how you said that and addressed that. Um, I know you guys, I've seen you all play Cupid. I've seen Jeff play <laughs> Baby New Year. I mean, I've seen all of it, but I also knew that you guys knew that it was always respect. Right. So, yeah. so I think it's, it's exactly what you're saying. I think that's just absolutely beautiful because we didn't, we don't see it. You know, anyone, everyone that worked with you, everyone, no, no one saw that. And so uh, I, I thought, it was, I thought I really took Jeff because Jeff did a lot of that early, early on elves and baby new years and stuff like that. And he's like, I'm an actor. It's a job. Yeah. Right. And, and exactly like you said, in every role that he played it in, it wasn't being looked down. It wasn't being made fun of. Uh, everyone was appreciative and, and respect. So I think that's really great how you said that. And it's, it's really interesting. I had the chance also, obviously, to show my face uh, when we did Land of Make Believe. Uh, I got to play Mr. Barnes. Yeah. And, um, and that was such a crazy experience as, as well. I know for me, it was weird like you know we're so used to to being in those costumes and and the world that that's in and then all of a sudden you're out on the set and you know you've got a makeup person and you know this whole thing and then and then you got to jump back in the in the costume and it's a whole different world right i mean you you got to go go into this whole different world of of uh of focus and and physicality and all of those kind of things what was it like for you because you guys were doing both in that, that episode as well. So what is it like all of a sudden, you know, elf time's over and it's back to, to, to playing BJ? I, I, I think, well, it's, it's interesting in the sense that you, you become so accustomed to a character that you're portraying. And right. whereas I, in essence, my, 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 this other role of being the elf, I'm in essence kind of being myself, but I'm a, I'm this other character. So I, it's like, I actually would prefer rather to be that seven year old dinosaur than myself. And, um, <clears throat> but I, yet still, I'm the experience was, I mean, was awesome. But you, you do have those, that just that creature comfort of I being incognito and just, I'm just going out and just, and being larger than, larger than that because I mean, when you're in a costume you, you got to amplify I mean, just the character that much more and so I mean it, it definitely is a comfort to be in the in the costume even though it, it does have right. its physical challenges but um well and isn't it funny it was probably harder to play the elf than it is to play bj right i mean yeah. for me i definitely say that playing mr barnes because you got all these cameras, and like you said, you can't look at the camera. All that stuff going on, much more difficult than yeah. just getting back in. Because I'm so used to doing bell kicks and running around in the heat and all that stuff. Same for you. Oh, totally. And yeah, like you say, I'm, you're 
I, it's more of a, a mental focus on a, similar to like what a, a, a puppeteer does. I mean, you're, you're manipulating, you're manipulating hand muscles and like being in a full body costume, I mean, you're, you're manipulating neck muscles and gestures uh, to really um, em emphasize a, a thought or a feeling, even right. though I mean, your, your expressions are limited, you, you are able to demonstrate certain expressions in different manners through, through body language. And I, I think having that kind of frame of mind, I, I, and I'm sure you could probably relate, I really adapted to that. Like it became more kind of subconscious of me to, to act in that manner. Whereas when I'm actually having to show, I mean, like just facial expressions and, right. and, and a lot of that really plays on timing and, and, just the element of surprise and like, whoa, hey, I, I, <laughs> right. it, it definitely, ha you have to kind of shift your thought I, when you're not in costume and you're actually I, mimicking those, those expressions with, I, as yourself, so. Can you think, do you have a favorite moment in the holidays filming, whether it's, it's, it's Macy's or tour or um, and friends? I would say, I and mean, I just think the experience of doing the Macy's Day Parade was pretty special just because you're I mean, you're out there and I, I'm able to talk with my mom and my dad and I remember the like the the first parade I did in 97 I, and I told and my mom's like I, can you make a gesture I, to or sign so I just remember like I was going to give a salute and a blow kiss and and I remember I, after that all was completed and got on the plane and flew back to Fargo, it was like my mom just expressed like, I saw you, you gave me the salute and you blew the kiss. And, and it's, it was kind of moments like those that I was kind of like, I'm, I'm anticipating. I just to know that like my mom saw me on TV. It was like, I'm, I'm and, and just obviously being in, in New York and just I mean, having those experiences during that during that time of season was quite special. But I mean, they're all they're all unique in their own ways. Yeah, I, I will tell you, and that that's just beautiful. That's that's beautiful. I, I will tell you probably my favorite, it would be Macy's as well, but it would be the night before. Um, the rehearsals oh, yeah. to me yeah. was the coolest thing that I've had, one of the coolest things I've ever done in my 22 years at Barney is being on the street in front of Macy's on a, on a Wednesday night with all the action of the city going on and the lights. And of course, no one knows who you are, yeah. right? So they're all wondering, cause we're, we're out of costumes and we're just kind of, uh, th this, is what, this is for the cameras, right? So we're doing a rehearsal for the cameras and uh, the energy was just, unbelievable I, I i just will never forget that yeah yeah and no, i i yeah definitely seen i just think back on all the spotlights that they have to help kind of just illuminate that that space even though it's during the daytime at nighttime it was just that just that much more intense but um yeah i definitely rehearsals i, I remember going out to see the the balloon the, I mean, having them do the inflating of the balloons, that was a lot of fun I mean, to, to see as well, because I mean, you don't realize how big those balloons get um, until you're like right up close to them. And then um, I just remember going out um, and, and when we, I, I want to say Sloan was with us. And I remember having dinner with Sloan and all of us that were a part of that and the I guess the director or the the lead person of the Macy's Day Parade that was a lot of fun and then Sloan's good friend Steve Krause who uh yes <laughs> he, 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 he's got he's got a lot of energy yeah. um, 
<laughs> being being out there with him too. He did our he's a part of uh, Clutterworks or that did our our confetti for the stage show tour. Yeah, um, he he definitely kind of gave me uh, a better perspective of uh, New York and like where certain things are and and such. So no, that how, those are good times. Well, Kyle, I can't thank you enough. It's just been, it's always so good to see you, but it's Likewise. awesome hearing your memories and, and sharing with everyone. Likewise, thank you for having me. And, and it's always a joy to be able to reminisce about the good times and those experiences. And I to refresh my memory. I, I'll, still, I'll still need to go back and, and think about what musical it was or the theater that was adjacent to Star Diner. Um, uh, but yeah, that, that, I know those are great, great, great times. And knowing Kyle, he will. I'll get a text message from him about that. He has also sent so many cool pictures, which we will put on this episode uh, and out on promotion. So get ready to see some really cool pictures as well. Have a wonderful time with your family. Please say hello to everyone. Say hello to Jill. Likewise. And uh, uh, um, Eli and Emery. Well, no, I was just going to say, I saw the picture of you and, and Eli at the game. Oh, yeah. Mavericks. <laughs> Mavericks and, and Timberwolves. And, Timberwolves. Yeah. Was... Yeah. If you go on YouTube, you can see a picture of Kyle and I years before on YouTube. Do you remember that? Oh, we were yeah. at a Mavericks game and someone, someone one of yeah. the guys, one of the cameramen from, from Barney shot it. And it's out on YouTube. You can see us yeah. at the game. And then... That's what I was thinking when I saw that picture last night. I was like, oh my gosh, boy, it's it's full sir. Eli looks just like it's just he's just, just like Kyle. And, and you Emory remember, is so sweet. You remember when we um were at the Target Center oh, uh, yeah. and saw KG make that last second shot? Oh yeah. When when we were I mean, that was the game before we started performing at that that venue. That was that I, to me, that was probably by far my most favorite. I one of my most favorite sports experiences. Yeah, it was it was incredible. Boy, we could have an episode on yeah. uh, Minnesota sports and all those experiences. That was amazing. And um, I've got pictures of, you know, my brother got to meet Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, or Jimmy Jam was there, which was cool. Yeah, too. Had, Minnesota was unbelievable. Rich yeah, and Rich Gannon. I've got a picture with Rich Gannon. Absolutely, I do. Yes, uh, Kyle and I can go off uh, into the rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> on sports so easy so we, there might be a whole episode about that but kyle man thanks so much have a wonderful time happy holidays and we will definitely see you soon all right much love and thank you so much for watching purple roads it's been such a great year we appreciate you watching the show this will be the last one for this year but we've got some great ones coming in 2022 so thank you so much and we'll see you in 2022 Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and remember to keep your eyes, ears, and your heart open, and you'll find your purple road. We'll see you next year.